and we're sketching the graph of this equation. First, let's notice that negative in front of the y, and we should isolate that y. So we can do that by dividing each term by negative 1. And then we notice that there are two terms in the brackets, and the x isn't by itself, it has a negative in front of it. So let's factor out a negative 1. And we're prepped for transformations. We note that we have a combination of transformations, a vertical reflection here, a horizontal reflection here, a vertical expansion by 3 here, a horizontal translation right by 1 here, and a vertical translation up by 2 here. And we start with our base absolute and go from there. And next we consider the order of our transformations. Reflections, expansions and compressions, and then our translations. Our vertical reflection has us rotating the graph around the x-axis. The horizontal reflection has us rotating the graph around the y-axis, which in this case doesn't really have any impact. And then we go on to expansions and compressions. Now, in this case, we have our vertical expansion by a factor of 3. That means for each of the points in this graph, the y values would be multiplied by 3. So let's establish some anchor points to sort this out. This one, negative 1, comma, negative 1. We multiply the y value by 3 and we get negative 1, comma, negative 3. 1, comma, negative 1. We multiply the y value by this one and we get 1, comma, negative 3. Finally, we deal with a vertex here. 0 times 3 gives us 0. So it's an invariant point. Stays right where it's at. We can stop and consider our current version of this relation at this point. y equals negative 3 absolute of negative x. Next, in our order of transformations, we go to our translations. The horizontal translation has us moving 1 to the right. And then, our vertical translation involves shifting everything up by 2. And we're done.